a man who was kidnapped as a newborn in Chile four decades ago and raised in the U.S. by a family who had no idea has met his biological family for the first time. Until this week, Jimmy Thiden's mother, Maria Angelica Gonzalez, thought that her newborn son had died 42 years ago. Mr. Thiden learned the identity of his biological mother after hearing about another man who had been stolen as a child in Chile. Well, I'm very happy to say that Jimmy Thiden joins us from Chile now. Uh, great to have you on the program. What an incredible story, a reunion after 42 years. You must have had so many emotions going through you in that moment. Yes, many emotions, um, most of which were joy, um, but a lot of anguish and a lot of sorrow mixed in. You say anguish and sorrow. Tell us about that. Why? Um, it's, it's complicated because there's a life that I have that I'm proud of and thankful for. Um, I was raised in a loving home in America, I was given every opportunity, and they spared me nothing to that end. Um, I had everything I could possibly um, imagine needing from that life, and from that life I've found a wife and I've had a beautiful family. I've got daughters that are fantastic. And so I wouldn't erase any of that. But at the same time, when I got to Chile, I was instantly faced with the life that was robbed from me, the life that on some degree, maybe I was meant to have. Um, and it's complex. It's a complex feeling. Uh, and then once I met my mama and I realized how sweet and kind and petite she was. I just, the idea that somebody would do this, that someone would attack her in that way, um, very difficult, very difficult. What conversations have you had uh, with your mother? What have you talked about? Ah, oh, we've had many conversations. So we've talked about uh, the circumstances leading up to uh, my kidnapping. We, you know, that she went from, she lived in Vinia de Mar at the time, and that she went to Santiago for the hospitals because they had the best hospitals, the best maternity ward, the best, the best everything at that time. And that in her mind, she was going to a trusted place, some place that she could, she didn't have to have those, you know, these crazy concerns about. Um, so we've talked about the events of that day. We've talked about how once I was born, before she could even hold me, before she could even name me, uh, they took me away. They told her I needed to be in an incubator and, you know, not to worry. And they took me away and she never saw me again. It's, um, mm, it's heartbreaking to think of a, a moment like that, but also incredible that you found each other again after 42 years. And not many people get the chance to see a life that they've had and a life that they could have had. What does that mean for you now? How will your life look now, look like from this point on? Oh, that's a giant question. Um, one that we're wrestling with every day. My wife and I kind of decompress by talking about what is our life going to look like after this, you know? Um, we, I think she put it best, honestly. She said, whether we, whether we ever expected this or not, like we are now a family on two continents. And we, the only way forward is through meaningful inclusion. And so it means reprioritizing some of the things we wanted to do. Some of the things that we thought were important to us leading up to this moment are no longer important or as important to us. And we'll prioritize setting aside resources to be, um, to be able to come back to Chile um, as frequently as we're able, as our schedules with our children's school and everything else allows so that our children can continue to grow in this identity uh, and we can continue to have meaningful relationships with our family. I can see how difficult it is for you to talk about this. I hope you're all right to continue. I just want to say thank you um, for doing this. I just wonder, because this is something that didn't just happen to you, is it? It happened to many others. Um, have you heard their stories? Have you uh, talked to any others who were kidnapped like you? Uh, yeah, so I found my family uh, because of a nonprofit called Nos Buscamos and the heroes that work there. And through Nos Buscamos, uh, which is a nonprofit here in Chile, uh, their sole purpose is to help 
um, help adoptees find their families, in particular with uh, regard to the Pinochet era. And w within that, w through that organization, they've also created a um, support network of those that have been found. And so we meet on the first of every on the first Saturday of every month. We have a Zoom meeting where we share the struggles, the the torment, the joy, the everything, the everything that comes with this, the reunions and the, and the desire for reunions or possibly the lack of desire for reunions by either biological families, adopted families or adoptees. It's complex, but we're there for each other in every way. Uh, and that's again, that's something that I would never have had. Uh, if it wasn't for Nos Buscamos. And so because of that and because of the DNA kit from MyHeritage.com, like I was able to find all of this um, and get these resources, which are incredible, mm. incredible. Well, you've said you'd like the government to do something, to prosecute any people who were involved uh, in your kidnapping and who, uh, you know, affected your life and the lives of many others in such a significant way. What would it mean for you and for others in your situation for that to happen? Um, well, so actually, uh, to be clear, I had said that for some people, prosecution is important. Um, for some people, a reading of the names kind of moment is important. Um, I think we're past that, I think, because the perpetrators are either very old or possibly already deceased. I don't think that's maybe the most practical way forward. I think. Really what needs to come from this and from the government is acknowledgement and reparations, right? We didn't just get stolen from our mothers and our mothers didn't just get robbed of our lifetimes. We got stole, we got our nationality taken from us. We got our identities taken from us in that regard. And so there has to be a reconciliation of that along with reparations made to the extent of mental health counseling for our parents and for us and for unlimited travel for us and our families and our lineage. You know, my children are affected, my children's children, my forever into perpetuity. We we have lost our identity in this and that needs to be acknowledged and reparations need to be made because for my family, you know, we sold our truck to come here, but we had a truck to sell. Other families might not have those resources. And meaningful, inclusive reunion is the way forward. It's the only way you make this better. You can't make it right, but it's the only way you make it better. And so the government has to step in to make that possible. That, that uh, certainly makes a lot of sense. And just how are you reconciling what you've lost now? Oh, just through moments together. Um, my mama and I walked down the street and she said, you know, this is this is your neighborhood. This is where you grew up. Just the other day, we took our daughters to uh, the playground where my brothers grew up playing. My sister grew up playing. Um, and my mama was talking about how these this area over here is like where we would have played soccer. And this area over here is where we would have had picnics and celebrated Christmas. And it, and this over here in the summertime is, be, I mean, she's just trying to make me part of these memories, um, or at least share with me that there were memories made there. And for me, it's just, it's part of who I am, even though it never happened for me, but it's beautiful to see my daughters running through that same playground, running through that same park and enjoying it, mm. um, is healing for, I think, my mama and me. And I think it's beautiful what you said, that you feel as though you fit in all along, like a missing puzzle piece that has now been found. And after two, 42 years, at least, there is that. Jimmy Thiden, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your remarkable story. You're watching The Daily Global. I'm Nancy Kachingira. We'll be back with much more. Stay with us here on BBC News.